you at this time, we just call the public relation officers to come. Good morning, Faith Tabernacle. Good morning, children of God. Can we say hallelujah this morning? Can we praise the name of the Lord? Praise the Lord. Can we do it another time? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Truly, God seeks our praise this morning. Are you in a position to give him praise today? Yes. Just reach deep down, no matter what it is, and let us say praise the Lord. Another time? Praise the Lord. God is truly desiring of our, pay, of our praise, and he deserves it too. Therefore, he asks that we give to him sacrifice of praise. That's what he asks for, sacrifice of praise. And today, you have health, you have strength, you're alive. So let us just give him all the praise this morning. This morning, the pleasure is mine to welcome you to our service. Those of you who are in the building and those of you who may be listening by way of radio welcome to our service on behalf of our bishop butterfield lady rosita and those of us who worship in this place this is the church of the lord and so you have freedom to just worship god anytime you come through these doors just open up your mouth and praise the lord Presiding so far has been Deacon Herbert Williams, and the word of God will be brought to us by Pastor Kenneth, closing with Deacon Herbert. If you look towards the back of your program, you'll see the opportunities for this week. This afternoon, there is biblical conversations with Minister Samuel at 7.30. Tomorrow, Monday, prayer meeting at 7.30 p.m., then midday prayer meeting, weekdays except Monday and Wednesday between 12 and 1 p.m. Bible study, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Evangelistic outreach, Thursday, 5 p.m. Youth meeting on Friday, 7.30. Our praise team rehearses each Saturday at 6 p.m. And then we have our Bible class Sunday, 9.45, followed by divine worship and biblical conversations. We express our, we want to celebrate today with those persons who have birthday towards going through the end of month, the month of February to the end. We have Dominic who had her birthday yesterday. And if there are other persons who we did not recognize, we hope that you had a wonderful day on your birthday during the month of February and we hope that you will enjoy many more to come. The church is reminded of a members and followers meeting scheduled for Thursday, February 28th, and this will be at 7.30. We ask that you be in attendance. Let us remember to always pray for the sick and the shut-in for the young people of our country, that men everywhere may be saved, and let us remember those in authority, our government, and those who are put over us, our employers, we also should be in constant prayer for them. We ask also that if you are in need of, church trans of transportation to church, please feel free to call Pastor Kenneth at 342-8095. I have a notice here coming to us from the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports and Culture, the Department of Education, and it reads, this is regarding Education Week 2013. Education Week 2013 will be observed from March 3 to 8, 2013, under the theme, Centers of Learning, Pathways to Success Through Partnerships in Education. The underlying focus throughout the week will be the public recognition of private sector organizations and businesses that have partnered with the education sector to enhance the educational experience and learning outcomes of the children and young people of the country. During the week, we will express our gratitude to them for their continued partnership. To this end, your congregation, all of us, we are invited to attend the following activities. Friday, March 1st, Friday coming, a parade commencing at the marketplace and culminating at the Town Center Mall. This begins at 2.30 p.m. 
Sunday, March 3rd, ecumenical service at the Paradise Baptist Church in Five Keys starts at 3 p.m. Monday, March 4th, primary school science and technology quiz at the Gustavus Lightburn Sport Complex. This starts at 9 a.m. Wednesday and Thursday, March 6th and 7th, the Fortis TCI Science Fair at the Gustavus Lightburn Sports Complex. So parents, guardians, all children, you are invited, including ourselves, our congregation, to take part in these activities put on by the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sports, and Culture. Now we're gonna take some time and just look around our congregation. Join me, look around, look who do you see? Turn around, turn around, just focus, look around. We have visitors in our midst this morning. Can we see the visitors who they are? Miss Claire, over there, could you stand and let us give you a special welcome. She's the mother of Sister Claudette and Alicia right there, and she's visiting us. We welcome you to our service. Thank you for coming to share with us. And now we're going to give everybody a reason, an opportunity to walk around and to greet Miss Claire and to tell her a personal welcome, okay? So stand with me, everybody, in the sanctuary, and we're going to celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Take some time, walk around the sanctuary, and greet each person. Please stand with me, church. Jesus celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus celebrate. He is
it's not um, about what you how, how much you give because um, all you need to do give from your heart and we want you to excite it when you're giving and we don't want to be like these people on um, these bills that was quarreling over stuff you see there are three bills the hundred dollar bill the fifty dollar bill and the one dollar bill they was quarreling over stuff and the hundred dollars say i bigger than you i have more figure behind me than you fifty dollars said i bigger than you and one dollar bill was there but one dollar said to, to them one thing i get in the plate more than you right. in the church so we don't want to be like that this morning you see in the world and in the church there are three type of people one the flint person our people you know what is flint flint are those rock you beat it and just little piece keep chipping off no matter how hard you beat it with that sledgehammer just little piece then you have the sponge people soak up for you to get the water out you have to squeeze and then you have the honeycomb person once you fill with honey keep dripping who are you this morning we for those of you who don't give yet you can just come and give your offering we could sing a song praise and worship we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. When we go for a few, the sacrifice is of Thanksgiving. When we go for a few, the sacrifice is of praise. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Father, I pray that you may give them strength that they can continue to work and provide not only for church but also for their family and extended family and the world in a whole. Bless it and keep it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, this time we're going to go into the praise and worship. Praise and worship. God bless you. 
Come on, bless the Lord. You tired of worshiping God? Let's stand to our feet this morning. Hallelujah. You want to worship God some more this morning? Hallelujah. Psalm 16, 8 to 11 says, I have set the Lord always before me because he, had, he is at my right hand. I shall not be removed. Therefore, my heart is glad. My glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou will not suffer thy holy one to seek corruption. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to seek corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence there is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is fullness of joy. And you should be full of this joy this morning. If you are a believer this morning, you should be rejoicing. You should be dancing all over this place and say, He set me free. You are no more longer in prison. You are no longer bound to sin this morning. But you are free because God has set you free. So I just want us to open our mouth and sing unto the honor and glory of God. Hallelujah. He set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift your voice all over this building this morning. If you know that God did that for you. What's like a bird in prison? I dwell. No pain of all my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me. Glory to God. He said, He set me free. He set me free. And he set me free. He brought the bonds of prison. Glory to God. 
free to serve the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who know that God has set you free this morning. Hallelujah. No matter what it looks like this morning. You are free this morning. You are free. Hallelujah. For God has done great things for us this morning. Some of you want to continue praising him this morning. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto his name this morning. For what he has done for us. Hallelujah. We are glad this morning. So we're going to shout all over this place. Hallelujah. For he is to be praised. Hallelujah. To be praised. Come on. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. Sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. We sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. We sing praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Praises, sing praises unto God, sing praises. We sing praises, sing praises unto God,
for what he has done for me. Hallelujah. He has picked us up. Hallelujah out of the dungeon. And he made something beautiful out of us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. No wonder the songwriter said, I feel like running. I feel like jumping. Maybe people think you are crazy. But you know what God has done for you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a God we serve this morning. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace this morning. Hallelujah. Alpha and Omega this morning. The beginning and the end this morning. The first and the last this morning. That's the God we serve this morning. Hallelujah. That's why we love him. Because he set us free. Hallelujah. And so we want to give him back our all this morning. Just love the Lord this morning as you see. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. For your face is all that I desire to see. Hallelujah. And when your eyes are on the shine, your grace, Lord. We need your grace this morning. Hallelujah. Your grace abounds in me. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Come on, worship the Lord this morning. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Come on, open up your mouth and sing it to him this morning. Is he beautiful to you?
hand in your presence, Lord. Somebody need healing this morning. Somebody need deliverance this morning. Hallelujah. Let your hand of mercy, Lord, extend your hand of mercy one more time towards us this morning. For we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. And if we have come to seek your face, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. You are worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift our hand, Lord, in the sanctuary. We're giving you back the praise. We're giving you back the honor, Lord. Let this be a sweet sound in your ears this morning. Thank you, thank you. Stay in the attitude of worship. Thank you, praise the Lord. You may, see, you may be seated. It is my honor and privilege this morning to present to you our speaker of the day, Pastor Kenneth. Pastor Kenneth. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. Give him praise, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a great privilege to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. There's no other place to be than to be in God's house. Praise the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you. It gives me joy every time I come to worship God with God's people and to fellowship with the saints. Praise God. That's why I'm so delighted to see every one of us here that has gathered to worship God together in unity and in spirit. Put your hands and give God praise for yourself. We miss you anytime we don't see you. Praise God. So always make sure that if you're not walking and you are free on Sunday morning, make sure you come. Praise God, because your seat is waiting for you. Praise the Lord. I bring greetings today to our bishop that is here. Praise God. God bless you, sir. May God continue to strengthen you as you continue to seek the face of God and do his will. And to our mother in the Lord who is not here, but I know you are listening by way of radio. And to all those who are our radio audience this morning, Stay tuned and God will bless you. Praise God. Put your hands one more and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord led in my heart to bring a message to all uh, this morning from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Turn to your Bible there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says a scripture we all know very well. We all know that very well. Praise God. Are you there? And then put your hold that place and then go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. I'll read that and I come back to Genesis. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Put a bookmark in Genesis chapter 1, then I'll come back there. Have you found that? Amen. Praise God. He said, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy father as it is this day. But thou shalt remember. To remember there means to acknowledge the Lord thy God for he it is that giving the power. Power there means dominion to get or to create wealth that he may establish his covenant with sworn to thy fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Praise God. Genesis chapter 1. Let's I want to read verse 1 and 2, then 26. Say, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And you can see 
down there, God said, anytime God said, let there be, and it was. And in verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over the creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created him, male and female. Okay. My title this morning from the word of the Lord is The Secrets to Financial Dominion. Secrets to Financial Dominion. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you because, Lord, your power is here. We thank you because your spirit is here to breathe upon us and to speak and to minister to us. Father, I ask that you use me this morning to communicate your word. Grant me boldness, courage, and anointing to speak your word today. Take over my being, take over my mouth. Lord, let your people hear your voice through my mouth this morning. Speak, O oh God, for thy servant hear it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Put your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> secret to financial dominion. I call it secret because it's not only really a secret, it's something we all know. But when you say secret, people want to listen, you know. <laughs> people want to know, to hear what's the new, what's the secret, you know. To have dominion means, or simply means to control money. First of all, dominion means an area or territory or jurisdiction. And so to have dominion is to rule or to exercise control over an entity or system. It suggests that the dominant figure is actually in charge and in control here. Yeah. And then he's sitting comfortably over and atop his jurisdiction. And that is called kingdom. So kingdom simply means, it's a compound word, king and dominion. A king of a domain or dominion. Also to have dominion suggests that one is superior to that which he dominates. Because it's impossible for the inferior to dominate or control the superior. So naturally, it's the superior being who controls the inferior element, as it were. So to have dominion over money simply means to control money, to rule money, to be in charge of money, because money is an entity, and it's under the control of man, and not the other way around. It is man who makes money. Money does not make a man. Do you understand that? Praise God. So, the greatest challenge many people are facing today is how to make ends meet. How to have their basic needs met. How to pay their bills. Some of us are thinking about tomorrow. Retirement and all that, you know. And to save money. Many are passing sleepless nights, struggling all day just to make ends meet. But you and I are created to have dominion over money and over the works of God's hands. According to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, where we read, And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over Creeping things that creep upon the earth. So, if you are born again, if you are born again child of God, you have dominion over money and things that God has created. We lost all that in Adam, but thank God for Jesus Christ who has come and recovered everything back unto us. Praise God. Now, why do we have dominion over money? Why do we have dominion? You have dominion because all things are yours. 
according to first corinthians chapter 3 21 to 23 i want us to be bible students this morning you can take your bible and follow me therefore the bible says let no man glory in men for all things including money are yours whether paul or apollos or cephas or people or the world or life or things present or things to come all are yours and ye are christ and christ is god's all things include money because money is a thing all the money you need is yours all the things you need are yours so if a thing is yours and it's not forthcoming what do you do you call it forth Praise God. Because you have authority over that. Yeah. If you have a dog and the dog is not coming, what do you do? Come here. And the dog will come. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. You have power to speak to the elements. You have dominion over money because the Bible says his divine power. I want to prove that to you, Bible. I'm not speaking out of my own. This is the things we've done. These are the things I know. And proved over time. You have power over the rain, over the storms. Okay? Uh -huh. So if you have power over the storm, the elements, the heavenlies, is it more you don't have power over? Praise God. I'm getting somewhere. You have dominion over money because his divine power has given us all things that pertain to what? To life and godliness. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says. His divine power has given us all things, money and things inclusive. So don't remove that. His divine power has given us all things we need for life and for what? Godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So you need money to be godly. Are you hearing me? You need money what? To be godly. So that you don't fall into saying stuff, you know, cheating, falsification of documents, cutting corners, you know, lying, prostitution and robbery and all that. So as a Christian, you need money. Believe it. That's why the Bible says, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prospers. He said, I am called that you may have life and have it what? More abundantly. So don't pretend and think that money is not good. You have dominion over money because God said you have whatsoever you say. Uh -huh. Mark 11 verse 23. For a very life say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He, sa he shall have what? Whatsoever he said. So he said, it's to you according to your word. So you have power to really call these things forth. And if you don't doubt in your heart, lack of money is a terrible mountain and it's one of the elements which ought to be removed and cast into the sea. Even in the gospel, we need money to run this place. Don't tell me. So, um, you, 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 are you getting what I mean now? Yeah. You need money for the lights to be on so that people don't cut you off. You need money to run the AC. Try to drive your car in the summer when it's hot and you don't have AC. And you don't have money to feed that. You understand what I mean? So it's a terrible thing if you speak to money to move from its present location to you. If you do not doubt, or God will cause it to happen in ways you do not know or least expect from sources you never thought about. I'm telling you things we know. For his ways are what? Far beyond your ways. And if there's a delay, do not doubt. Do not fear. Do not worry. For God is at work, praise God, to bring your declaration to pass. So you can say, money come to me right now. Money come into my hand. Bills be paid. I'm going somewhere. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you have fulfilled 
the requirements, then you have power to do that. Praise God. You have dominion over money because God has placed everything in the hands of Jesus. Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 35, the Father loves the Son and has placed everything, everything, everything is everything, including what? Money. Everything. everything. Into his hands. Therefore, since you are in Christ, whatever has been placed in his hand is also your simple. That's why God said, plead your cause, plead your case. Come before God and bring all this thing before him. But we are lazy, you know, to do that. Looking up to men, looking up to government, looking up to individuals, our paychecks and all that, you know. <laughs> our bank account, you know. Uh -huh. But these are real and these are things we are proved. And it works and it continues to work. You have dominion over money and things because God has given you all things. He that spare not his son, uh, hallelujah, his own son, uh, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him <laughs> freely give us all things? So, you have dominion over money because God has given you all things, including money. If he did not spare Jesus Christ, then what can he spare from you? If you are his son, obedient son of God, and you didn't come before him, he will give you. <laughs> are you hearing me? He will give you. He will give you. He will give you. Just please your father. And everything your father has is yours. Will be yours. So you should spend time pleasing God. So that when you come before him in need, he will be more than ready to meet your need. Hallelujah. It's not what the Bible says. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Everything you need, if you ask God, he will give you. That's why he said, ask. And it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh what receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And he said, What man is there of you? If his son asks bread, will give him what? A stone. Or if you ask for fish, will give him a serpent. No. He said, If you know how to give good things to your children, how about your holy father? Let's not make God a liar. God is not wicked. Let's look for the fault if it's not working somewhere else. So if God can afford to give us eternal life, which money cannot buy, he can also afford to give us money and things that money cannot buy. He can give you things money can buy. He can give you things that money cannot buy. The same way God freely gave Jesus to die for you and me is the same way he has freely given you all things, money, and things inclusive. And then you have dominion over money represented by silver and gold. Because the Bible says the silver is mine and the gold is mine. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. In most financial institutions, our bankers say the wealth of nations represented with certain quantity of gold called gold bullion, you know, in their vault of their central bank. Praise God. So the silver and gold belongs to God because he created them and that the works of his hands. So whatever belongs to your heavenly father is yours when you come into proper sonship relationship with him. That's all. When you come into a proper sonship relationship with him, then everything he has is yours. If you are in Christ, and Christ is in you, everything that God has given to Christ is yours automatically. Praise God. God has many ways to bless you, you know. The problem is that we limit God and we bring him to our level. 
That's why he said, I will go before you and make what? Could the crooked places to be straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. And he said, and I will give you the treasures of darkness. Treasures hidden. God knows how to go. You don't know where it is. So the money you need now, the things you need now, the breakthrough you need now, is somewhere with somebody you don't know. <laughs> so just serve God. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, secret places that you may know that I am God, which called you by the name, praise God. Hallelujah. So don't worry about how your needs will be met. You will fulfill the requirements and your needs will be met. Now, things you must do to experience financial dominion. There are some things I want to show you. Few things, just few, because I don't intend to keep you long here. That you need in order for your financial needs to be made, to be met, and then you can have dominion. Number one is to acknowledge God who gives you power to create wealth. Someone was saying yesterday that in those days, even here, the churches were full, but there was no money, you know. He said, so that the offering for the whole week was $1.75. Those days, you know. <laughs> but now, we have the money, and then we don't have the people. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> Those days, we had the people, there was no money, but we were faithful, doing mighty work for God. Now people have the money. The churches are empty. As Pastor Sammy says, if you get up to how many people? 20. You are, you, are, you are a big church, you know. So to acknowledge means that you should not call yourself a self-made man or woman. You know. This was the scene of the former one famous head of state in those days. In the country of Babylon, you know. <laughs> That was the sin the man committed. And he had to eat grass for seven years. His name was what? Nebuchadnezzar. He looked at himself. Yeah? Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. He said, this great Babylon I have built as a royal residence for my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. Yeah? <laughs> he ate grass, you know. When I say grass, not salad, you know, you know that was real grass, you know. <laughs> it's all let you see that one. <laughs> oh, cabbage. He ate grass, you know. And the dew fell on him. Because he never acknowledged God. I made myself. Nobody can tell me what to do. You know, and they speak with English and all that. Failure to acknowledge God's mercy and help over your life can lead to a series of problems. Including lack of money. You are not a self-made man or woman. You are a man or woman made by God. God made you. Whatever you have today, whatever you are today, is from God. God is bound to turn the wisdom of the wise into foolishness. If they fail to acknowledge him as the giver of the power to create money and be what they are today. Because when they have it, they can pay their tithe, they can give offering anymore. You can't see them anymore. Until another problem comes, then you can't see them again. That's the way. That's my experience, you know. And number two is to learn to praise God all the time. You want to have financial dominion. One of another secret you have to what? Learn to praise God all the time. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise will cause the earth to yield her increase for you. The content, praise God, including money, gold and silver. I like what Psalm 67 says, verse 3 to 7. It says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. So when you come to church, brothers and sisters, don't just sit like this. Praise God. Learn to give God some praise. You didn't make yourself. You could have been in the cemetery this morning. You could have been in the morgue this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Learn to give God praise. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the nations be glad and sing for joy. Here is not a cemetery. Here is a place to praise God. Hallelujah. 
Be re joyful and rejoice. Dance before him. Be joyful before God. Magnify his name. Thank him for all. You can find a thousand things to give God thanks. But the devil will always show you the things you don't have. The things that God has not done. Praise God. So when you don't serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, they will allow you to serve your enemies. Your enemies can be sickness or disease or whatever it is. Hallelujah. But when you praise God, the uh, Bible says, let all nations uh, be glad and sing for joy. Uh, for thou shalt judge the people what? Righteously uh, and govern the nations upon the earth. Uh, let the people praise thee, O God. Uh, let all the people praise thee. Uh, then shall the earth uh, do what? Yield her increase. So praising God will cause the eggs that God caused to yield the increase. Praise it reverses every cause or covenant over your life, over your family, over your ministry, over your finances, over the work of your heart, uh, your hands. Uh, then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God shall bless us. Uh, God shall bless us. Uh, and all the ends, uh, all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Praise is God's way to cause the earth to yield her increase of silver and gold. Hallelujah. And for you to bless him. That's why after you give, people give offering and help people and all that, but you have to water it with praise. Do you understand? You have to water it with praise. Not complaining. Not going back and to look what is, you know, no. When you give your tithe, you give your offering, what tithe you want? We praise. Thank God. There's no perfect divine blessing without money. Many other things of life, many other blessings of life are made manifest in money equivalent. If you want the air to yield an increase of money to you, then learn to praise God. I'm teaching on this topic because I, I can see it's a problem, you know. It's a problem. Uh, even in the church <laughs> even in the church let's not pretend it's a problem the earth will yield her increase of silver and gold money to you and you find pastures for food for your life for your family for your ministry Another thing you should know is you have to make use of God's holy angels to contact your money sources. Angels have played and continue to play vital role in human existence. Angels are divine agents whose job is to carry out divine operations on your behalf. That's why the Bible says, Behold, I will send an angel before thee to keep in the way and to bring thee into the place I have prepared. There's a place God has prepared for you. You got to be in a place God has what? Prepared for you. God has not changed. There's a place that God has prepared for you and I. Praise God. And he will send his angels to take you to that place. Hallelujah. That your needs can be met. He knows where it is. He only is waiting for you to fulfill your own parts. Of that covenant. God already had the ram held up in a ticket waiting for Abraham. And just gave Abraham instruction. He was there already. Every step Abraham took was getting him to the place. Hallelujah. To the place where the lamb was. To the place where his need was. So many of us are not getting because we don't have we fail to obey the instruction that God has given us. So the angels of God are there to take you to the place. That's why he said, ah, he shall give his angels over you. What? To keep it. He will give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all thy ways. God said he will send his angel ahead of you. To keep you in the right way or path. And bring you into the place. To get your need met. To get your money. To get the things you need. 
to speak and to arrange the circumstances and situation to favor you. God's holy angels are in charge of bringing you into contact with your money sources supply. The people that carry your divine assignment. I believe God set it for me. Before I came, God said, all that time I used to have visions and dreams. God planned. You, you, everyone. Praise God. I never knew. But all I needed to do was to take a step of faith. Praise God. And he was there waiting for me. If Abraham refused, <laughs> imagine what would happen. Imagine what would have happened. If he disobeyed God. So many of us are ignorant of all these things. God's angels are responsible to bring you in contact to the people you are carrying or that are carrying your money <laughs> and the things you need. God's angels are responsible for that. It's not about, oh, it just happened. It didn't happen. It was God's angel that was there to make sure things happen. So believe it and refuse to worry and it will manifest in his time. Put your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So recognize that you are not alone. God is there with you. No matter what you are going through. No matter the circumstance. And the next thing you should do is to practice seed sowing and planting regularly. Uh -huh. This will not come there. I've shown you what you have. What God has already done for you. And how you get there. But you have a responsibility to give and to sow and to plant regularly. There is a season for sowing seed and for reaping them. There was a season for sowing seed and for reaping. If you fail, if you fail to sow in that season, you will not have anything to harvest later. Are you hearing me? There is a season you sow. Whatever you give today, you are giving it to us tomorrow. So don't think you are doing anybody good or favor. <laughs> don't think you are doing your church favor or future butterfly or anybody. No! Keep back. God will see fulfill his work, you know? Don't give. God will see fulfill his purpose. I used to say that God will never depend on our wretched purposes for replenishment or for his work to be done. Our wretched purposes will always depend on God for replenishment. Because anytime you spend, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. You need to replenish that. Who will do that? It is God. So anything you give towards his purpose is a seed you are planted for tomorrow. So now is your season for sowing into the kingdom and into the lives of people. And your harvest will surely come. Hallelujah. I say your harvest will surely come. Huh? Your reward will surely come. There is a season when you give and give and give. And then reap later in abundance. That's why Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3 says, If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. <laughs> if the clouds be full of what? Rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. For rain to fall, the clouds must be full of water through the process of evaporation and condensation and then, you know, it will burst open. That process of evaporation is like the earth is giving back again. And nothing will happen until the cloud is full. So when you give, hallelujah, it's like that you are sowing, you are giving. You are sowing, you are giving. Giving and receiving is like that. And so when your own cloud, that, that's what I call season. There's a season. <laughs> Praise God. Whose leave will not what wither? There's a season for you. And whatsoever he does, what shall prosper? You will bear fruit in your season. When the cloud is full of rain, and some of us, John, you might drop in one more giving. 
one more kindness, uh, one more push, praise God. Pia, 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 everything will go. <laughs> I was watching the other day, and this guy was putting some money on this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for that. I'm not for, for those things they do. You know that stuff? <laughs> all those machines, all the slot machines, and all that. But it came to a point, it was just one few, one dollar, one thing. You just pull like that. Then everything just came raining. Praise God. <laughs> so, one more giving, one more effort, one more kindness, the clouds full. And people begin to wonder what happened. It happened suddenly. It didn't happen suddenly. The man said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And as the son to go and look, he said, Nothing. He said, Go seven times. Came back again. So I just saw one finger. And before you know it, the whole cloud was full. All those three and a half years of drought. Uh, praise God. Uh, in one second. Uh, in one moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. He told Ahab. Elijah said. Uh, I hear the sound uh, of the abundance of rain. Get you fast, fast, fast. Before the rain overtake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then there was what? A recovery of everything. That the drought has consumed in three and a half years. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. It's about to rain. It's about to fall. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when there's rain, then there's hope of harvest. <laughs> there's hope of recovery. I see God causing you to recover everything that you have lost in the name of Jesus. So in drought. And it says, in the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold them not, for thou knowest whither we shall prosper, either this or that, or that both of them shall prosper, or be alike. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. So we are encouraged to give or sow our seed on a regular basis. Continuously. Do that. Don't just do it today and forget about that. I didn't say it to happen. No matter the weather or circumstance, you don't know which thing or which giving or act of kindness will trigger your rain. And that's why some people stop when they are just so close. They complain. And everything, 10 years, 20 years of effort, nothing. You don't know. Don't stop. Tell your neighbor, don't stop now. Don't stop now. Keep doing good. I read a story of this homeless man recently. Hallelujah. Pray for many years, maybe 27, 30 years. He's been there in the street in America begging. I don't know what happened to him. But one day, somebody mistakenly gave some money, all the money she had, the coins and all that, emptied his plate, including her engagement ring, platinum and diamond engagement ring. And she didn't even remember until the following day when she went to get it. Ah, what happened? And she remembered the homeless man. And she went, ha, ha, ha. Some people, that was it. They will make away with it. Go and sell it. Uh -huh. But <laughs> opportunity. Say, God, I thank you. You sent your angel today to give me a platinum diamond ring. God, I thank you. I am back. I am made. He, you know, the next thing they are going is to go and sell it. But this, car, this man was different. He stayed put. And the following day, the woman came. said, do you recognize me? He said, no. I see a lot of people here. So I must have given you something so expensive. So, oh, the ring? Ah, praise God. And he gave back the ring to the woman. Of course, the woman and the, woman and the husband gave him everything they had in, on them. And then went again and broadcast it everywhere. I had it in CNN. <laughs> praise God. The news everywhere is carrying about the homeless man. And they formed a blog, hallelujah, where people can contribute money. They wanted to raise $1,000 in three months for this man. $1,000 in three months. But within one week or less, 16000 had been raised for a man that was homeless. 16000 One act of kindness. One act of kindness. His reign opened. He's been there suffering. I don't know what happened to him. But he's been there. One act of kindness. 
the cloud was full of rain. Hallelujah. Now everybody's talking about him. Praise God. All the news are trying to invite him. Hallelujah. He's made. All instantly. Then his brother, somewhere, I have not seen him 30 years, now called. <laughs> then his sister somewhere now called to speak to him. Hallelujah. I see rain falling. Huh? You will recover everything huh? in the name of Jesus. Keep sowing. Keep, keep doing good. Why the earth remains? Seed time and harvest. And I was wondering, where was his brother, his senior brother, all this while? Where was he? <laughs> where was his sister? I tell you, when God finished with you, people who have not, that have not called you will begin to call you. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Be a consistent and persistent supporter of the gospel. I have been doing this for years. God has not let me down. I've always paid my tithe. Always giving. You must learn to give regularly. You do not give today and once in a while and expect a constant receiving or harvest. Uh, praise God. He who soweth sparingly shall also what? Reap sparingly. He who soweth what? Bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Uh, the measure you give is the measure you will receive. Uh, hallelujah. As a farmer, the more you sow, the more you reap. Uh, what you give for the gospel uh, and those in need uh, is credited to your account. Out, uh, and not to theirs. Read it in Philippians chapter 4 from verse 9, 9, 10 to 9, 19. People only read in verse 19. My God shall supply all my need uh, according to riches in glory. He is also my God, you know. But there are conditions you must meet in that place. Read it. Read it there. It's before that can happen. Read it from verse 10. Includes consistent giving once in a while once every time not once in a while but every time giving to the gospel consistently giving to the, to the gospel and give sacrificially it must cost you something give sacrificially don't leave it for few people to do don't leave for the bishop if we are all here in the presence of God Cause something to bring me here. Cause something to keep me here. Praise God. And if we're blessing to you, if you are blessed by the ministry, you have to communicate back and make sure that everything is working as God wants it. What you give for the gospel and for the gospel and those in need, they are accredited for your account. Whatever you give, you have an account in heaven. Just you have an account in Scotia, your bank or the FCIB over there. So whatever you put in there, you can go boldly and put something there and withdraw. Hallelujah. Same thing in heaven. Some people want to receive from the account of heaven, but there's nothing there. The account is empty. The account is empty. Many people's accounts in heaven is empty. So you need to give and give and give to bring your account up. You need. So that when there is trouble, you can go boldly to God and say, Lord, I want to withdraw. Hallelujah. Praise God. Put your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thank God for thank God for the church for giving the opportunity. That's what the church is there. To give. The church is there for it's an opportunity for us to express our love. Our giving ability so that we can what receive. That's why the church is there. And then thank for those those that you give to. <laughs> because even though you are giving to them, you are actually putting it in your account. Uh -huh. It's a secret. That's why it's called a secret. If you give to me, you're not really giving to me. You're actually storing it in heaven. So I better take what you give me and also give my tithe and give my offering. So that I also can have what? An account. Some pastors don't give, you know. Some preachers of this thing don't give. They don't pay tithe. They don't give offering. Uh -huh. So you must renew your concern for the things of God. So to have dominion of our money, you must learn to put your money into the gospel and into the right places. Uh, share in the trouble of giving the gospel to others. Share. 
You may not go there, but people are going there. So support it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Share in the gospel of running this ministry. Share in the trouble of what making things work. Don't leave it for a few people. Share in the trouble of supporting the church uh, to fulfill its obligations uh, and responsibilities. Uh, nothing pays like this kind of investment. It is an investment. We don't understand that. It's, what, it's an investment. I must be about my father's business. It's a business. That will require us or an ass or a place to gather or a place to have lunch with his disciples. Yeah. Bring you all the tithes. You store what? My storehouse. Then they have, so that there will what? Be meat. He's not talking about chicken only. Or talking. Meat. Money. To pay bills. Pay staff. Get new light and equipment and all that. The boss is old. Hey, yeah. We need to get a new boss, you know. Meat. You can't have money in your bank and then the church is broke. It's not right. It's not right. It's not about equal giving. It's not about what equal sacrifice. Like the man said this morning. You may give hundred. Some of them might give what? One. One out of, out of from five dollars. The person, you see, it's a sacrifice. Do you understand? It's not about equal giving. It's about equal what? Sacrifice. Let it cost you some. God is seeing. God is seeing everybody. He's looking at what is left behind after you have given. And the Bible says that that woman and that widow gave all she had to what? To might. Have you? Yeah. But all those other people were giving and giving and you know, they, everybody was, you know, giving. In Nigeria, we have this dress, this, you know, big man, you know, the show off. But the poor widow came and gave two pence or whatever. And God said, ah, she has given above every other person. Because she gave out of her want. So God sees that. It's part of that. Praise God. Let's do something. It's to our own good, to our own benefit. To see the gospel preached. So you must renew your concern. For your, some of our love is the yeah, 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 yeah. No. Renew your concern for the bishop, your pastor, the ministers, the missionaries. Year after year. Some people don't even bless or appreciate the pastors or nobody. No, no, after year. No, no. Do you know what? He will tell those who are preaching, he will tell you what it takes to preach. <laughs> the effort. It, well, it's not so the way I'm coming from. No, it's not so. I can't tell you that. Appreciate those that communicate spiritual things. Praise God. If they give you spiritual food, you'll communicate back to them. It's wickedness to, not to do that. Take something to do this way. You say a lot of sacrifice. You don't believe it. Give to the widows. Give to the fatherless. Give to the strangers. That's why in Nigeria those days I, I started this operation, Feed the Poor. Feed. I've always wanted to do something for the needy. Praise God. And I will gather, we will gather food, we will cook, and we will go there. And they got the attention of the national television. Praise God. And they came up several times and carried it there. And when I came here, the same body I had. Praise God. I said, go, wow. I go to five kids. I go to, 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 to those other places. Invite and all that. God, God, give me what it takes to help people. Sometimes I save my lunch because I'm fasting. <laughs> then I'll give it out. I'll give my food out. I recently God made an opportunity for me to be able to do that, really, you know, and all that, go out there and be giving them things and all that. I like to see, oh my God, you don't believe it, there's poverty, there's people are hungry, you know. Last time I went there, over up the bite, you don't believe it, my wife was there. You don't believe what I saw. Do something. Praise God, do something. You can send somebody if you don't have the time to do that. Your money will do that. Are you hearing me? the church to help the community and to help people. Help the church. And you're actually helping yourself. You're helping your generation. I'm telling you. Bible says pure religion and on the fire before God and the Father is this, to visit the world, the fatherless and the widow in their affliction. 
and to keep himself unspotted on the wall. One of those there was under the tree in five kids. I go there regularly. You know, anytime I go there, you know, and one of those guys, they were so happy. And he cooks food there. I said, Pastor, come, come. I, what was that? Is it lobster they call it? I said, Pastor, I want to give you something. I cooked lobster, lobster rice and all that. I was, I was, I, was, I wanted to keep taking it. I was say, don't worry, Pastor, I want you to eat it. <laughs> I, I, I went to the sea to get it. I, I want you to eat it. Uh -huh. Oh, God. And he prepared it, put everything there. You know, I was looking so delicious. He said, Pastor, I want you to eat it. He said, Macintosh. <laughs> they were so happy. Why should you do that? Because I'm there in the affliction. I visit them, praise God, where they are. Preach the gospel to them. Lay hand on them. And pray what? Yeah. Yeah, I have to eat it, my pastor. <laughs> he won't let me go. I ate it. I even took picture with him. <laughs> I ate it. <laughs> yeah. He can cook. Mark touch. He can cook. But it's under the tree there. You have to sit where they sit before they listen to you. Oh, yeah. Some people will not go there. You, they won't go there. They won't go there. They won't go to those boys in Kingstown. No, 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 no. They won't go there. You won't go there. You have to know who you are to get there. <laughs> you have to know who you are. So finally, the Bible says, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, uh, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That though he was rich, uh, oh, praise God. Uh, yes, for your sake, uh, he became poor. Uh, that you, through his poverty, uh, might become rich. Uh, money is a powerful tool. And what we do with money is very revealing. Money is powerful because it can either control us or, or hurt our lives. Or, or we can control money uh, and bless others. Uh, the question is this. Uh, are you controlling money? How should you control money? We can gauge money's power over us. Often by simply looking at our giving records. Bishop, one day, a man of God, somebody I know was, was in need of money. He was in need, Bishop. Are you hearing me? The man was in need. And he went to pray. And said, God, I need money. I need money. I want to solve my problem. God said, good. Answer, but go and look at your record over the last year. And the man went to look at his financial giving and discovered he was miserable. He has to repent. Are you hearing me? We can gauge money's power over us often by simply looking at our giving records. How can you be giving? God, I'm not saying that giving a dollar is not good. If that's all you have and can afford. But you know who you are, but God forbid. I don't even do that. It's my daughters that give a dollar. You know, you can't be a leader of the church and be giving a dollar. Why do you want this thing to be done? And God knows how much you have. No, God knows. Let's, not, let's be serious. Praise God. Give something that you know will push that weak offering forward. Are you hearing me? Give something you know that can be, the, the bill can be paid. Somebody, do you understand? Do something. Oh, come on. If everybody here give a dollar, it's only hundred, less than hundred dollars. It can't do anything. Are you hearing me? Some people must give something for that to happen. Are you hearing me? Praise God. So giving financially to your church shows your love for God. Uh, giving also shows you want others who are less fortunate than you to be blessed. And that you want to cut the cost of having church. There's a cost of having church. You want to share the part of having church. Let's be realistic. It costs something to have this church every day. Yeah. Ask everybody here who is participating. Ask everybody. They will tell you. Share in the body of having church. Are you hearing me? You are listening to me in the, on radio. You have a church also. Share a responsibility. On the other hand, as I close, not giving or giving very little says bad things about you, you know? Says bad things about you. When you give, you don't give away. When you give, you give away your selfishness. You give away your materialism. You give away your greed. Not tithing or not giving is one of the surest signs that you are struggling with materialism, selfishness, and greed. And you don't want to fail in something as trivial. You don't want to fail. Even if you fail in something, don't fail in money. You don't want to fail in something as temporary as money. Jesus didn't. He gave it all away. He gave it all away. He gave it all away, including his very life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Imagine if we all live 
lives of selflessness like Jesus Christ and generosity as Jesus Christ. Churches who could feed thousands of people who could do so much and help. Who could be relevant and build the kingdom. You know, we're talking about building kingdom. Doing things that people will recognize that we are here. The church is what? Here. Share the gospel to everyone and be a shining light. Hallelujah. Praise God. Finally, giving also shows we love people, God, and the cause of Christ. Hallelujah. After you have praised God and given your tithes and fulfilled all these things, you know what you do? You now begin to call forth money. That's where I started from. <laughs> you now begin to speak to those things. Hallelujah. Because you have fulfilled the requirement. Yeah? You have given. Yeah? You have shared. Yeah? You have praised God. Hallelujah. Now you can now speak to money. Money, come to me. And he will come Because he knows where he's going to do. Let's stand to our feet. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Hallelujah. Speak to money to come into your hands. Speak to money to come into your business. Speak to money to come into your employment. Speak to money to come into your home right now. Speak to money to come. And if we are not being given, repent right now. Ask for mercy. Ask God to forgive you for not supporting, for being so hardened towards the gospel, towards the pastors, towards the missionary, towards the gospel, to the church. If you think you were giving to the bishop before, repent right now. You are giving to God. And whatever you give to God, God will give you back. We speak to money right now. We command money to come from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. In the name of Jesus, money move from your present location into our hands, uh, into our businesses, uh, into our career, uh, into our jobs, uh, into our pockets, uh, into our bank accounts. Uh, move into our checking accounts uh, right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, money will speak to you right now. Uh, you are just like any other thing that God created. Uh, we have power over the earth. Uh, we have power over the rain. Uh, we can say to the rain, come uh, and we come. Uh, we can say to the rain, stop and it will stop. Uh, therefore, just like that, uh, Money will command you right now to begin to come to us uh, now. Uh, come into our ministry. Uh, come into faith tabernacle uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, come into the hands of our members. Uh, come into the hands of the, uh, of the people uh, that will give back uh, to the Lord uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we command you. Uh, come in hundreds of thousands. Uh, come in millions. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we contact the people that we need right now to receive the money that we need. Hallelujah. We release signs. We release miracles. We command the merchants, the business people uh, to begin to come. People that have the money, people that have the means. Let the daughters of time come with the gifts in their hands. Let the rich among the people entreat our favor in the name of Jesus. We contact our money sources. We break every hold of the enemy over this church, over our finances, over our accounts. In the name of, we release the spirit of liberality. In the name of Jesus, every closed fist be opened by the blood of Jesus. Every closed heart towards God uh, be melted right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, let even strangers build up our walls. Send help for this ministry. Lord, as many as have been given, oh God, and it is their time for harvest. Father, let the harvest begin right now. In the name of Jesus, we release financial breakthrough. We command doors to open. As many have been faithful in their tithes and offerings, I decree it is your time in the name of Jesus. Father, you call it those things which be not as if they were. We call forth help. We call forth money. We call forth jobs, employment uh, in Jesus' name. Money making opportunities, uh, money making contrasts, and uh, employment and engagement uh, in the name of moving the heart of men and women to favor us. Let there be a miracle. Let there be a, a turnaround. Let the heavens open over faith tabernacle church of God. Lord, help your servant, Bishop Butterfield. He has sown. He has continued to skiff. Father, remember him for good. Remember his wife. Remember his home. Remember his family. 
Remember the pastors and ministers of this church. To remember the members that have been consistently supported us. Father, let this be their season to rejoice and to celebrate. We bless you. We thank you for we have dominion over money. And we exercise that dominion. And we declare money coming to us now in the name of Jesus. Money coming to our hands. Fresh release of favor. Lord, we bless you. Thank you. As we enter into this month and into this week, there shall be a testimony that indeed we are serving a good God. We break the cost of lack, the cost of poverty, the cost of limitation over our lives in the name of Jesus. For as many as believe, make them millionaires so that they can support the gospel. Make us relevant to our country, to our communities. Give us and not take us. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Put your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Shall we give Pastor Kenneth another hand? Yeah, truly, it was good. He has been spoken um, about giving, and sometimes is we are the one who cause the problem because we cause sometimes we do not bless. We end up our blessing because not nothing belongs to us; it belongs to God. God give us, and He just asks us. And all about giving is um, the principle behind giving. And if we don't follow the, follow the principle, then we get ourselves in trouble. Don't be like the guy. This guy is stranded in the desert for thirst. And he, very, he scrambled to, and he saw a shark. And he went into that shark. And when he went there, there was a, um, a jar, small jar with some water. Beside, beside the jar was a pump, water pump. And beside the water pump was a sign. And the sign said, use this water to, to put in the pump, to prime the pump. And he find himself in a serious spot because he was so thirsty. And the sign said, use the water to prime the pump. And then you can start to pump and you will have water. So he was into a problem. Today is the principle. Are you going to use the water to pump? to prime the pump? Are you going to drink that little water and do not have a, you, you might find yourself in an uncertain situation. Prime the pump or drink the water. The water, if you drink that little jar of water, is an uncertainty what might happen to you. But if you prime the pump, follow what the signs say. Jesus is saying to you today so many things. So you can either obey him or you disobey his word. So it's up to us. He said, give and it shall be given back to you. Running over. That's, we have to shake down. You have to press down. So it's up to you today. May God bless you. May he keep you. We're going to just, can't, we're going to just close with this song. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walk with me. Lead me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. In order for us to do all this, thing, we have to allow Christ to hold our hand. We cannot go by ourselves. We will fail. But with Jesus with us, we will do it together.
unto him that is able to keep us and present us faultless before the only wise God. Rest remain with us all. We all say amen. God bless you.